Hello stampers and friends, it's Nicole Steele of thejoyfulstamper.com and today I thought I would show you how I used the Lily Pad Impressions Designer Series paper to make a scrapbook page. Um, I like to make scrapbook pages every year when my kids get their new school pictures. I make a scrapbook page with the previous year's school picture and I tuck behind it all the different mementos and papers that they want me to save in their report card from the previous year. So I thought I would use the Lily Pad Impressions designer series paper to make this card or to make this scrapbook page. Sorry. So this paper is found in the Stampin' Up! Celebration uh, 2020 catalog and it's free with a $50 order and I'm gonna use the back side has these impressionist uh, paintings on them but I'm gonna use the more the less pattern side the less pattern side. these are like watercolor paint washes so all right well let's get started I'm gonna move these supplies out of the way and we'll start working with the paper here so I just went ahead and I cut these different st patterns of paper by four inches and three inches. So that's what each of these are, four by three inches. All right, and I am going to take a journaling pen and I'm just gonna draw an outline on all of them just to frame it. Now, this video is not about doing a project in a hurry. I find scrapbooking to be very relaxing. And I also find too that while I'm scrapbooking and working with the photos, it's fun for me to reminisce on the event or the person that I'm scrapbooking. So it's a very, um, very slow process for me. And it's one that I actually enjoy it's relaxing it's soothing and I find it fun so I generally do not hurry when I am scrapbooking I take my time now this technique of just using a black journaling pen to outline pieces is one that I actually use quite a bit I use it in my card making I use it in my scrapbooking I find when I'm looking at a project and I feel like it's missing something just taking a simple black journaling pen and doing a little doodling like this along the edges is enough to add that something something I am looking for. And these journaling pens which Stampin' Up! carries write so smoothly the ink just flows right out. It doesn't skip which I don't know if you've ever tried to journal in your scrapbooks or write inside your cards but it's frustrating when you're writing and the pen skips. I find that these don't do that. So again, this paper is from the Lily Pad Impressions pack, which is in the 2020 Stampin' Up! Celebration catalog, free with a $50 order. And I cut these down, some of the patterns down, into four inch by three inch pieces to glue to my 12 by 12 scrapbook page base. Okay, so I'm gonna use some liquid glue to go ahead and adhere those down now. First up will be this Grapefruit Grove piece. And it's gonna go this way so that the four inch side is the side that's the length. And I believe this color is pretty peacock, so I'm gonna start do this one next. Now the pattern on the other side is really pretty too. But for my scrapbook page, it would have been a little bit too busy, so I'm not going to use it. Um, let me readjust these here so I can get them the way I want them. Okay, that way we can make sure all the pieces fit on. Now what I should have done is I should have laid these out before. Before I put the adhesive on them so that I was sure I was gonna fit them all on but it'll work we'll get it to work and just put a little bit of dab of glue on the sides there and I'm gonna glue that piece down okay 
And then I'm gonna put, that's along the top, and then I'm gonna do this along the bottom. And I'll lay these out just like this. There we go. Now what might be helpful is if you glue the middle piece down first. And then we'll put the grapefruit groove piece down. And last will be the pretty peacock one. There we go. Okay. And then next I have these two pieces, which are also part of that pack of Lily Pad Impressions Designer Series paper. And I'm gonna use liquid glue to put those down also. Get it going. Okay, put one on the left. And then I'm gonna put one on the right. This is a very simple color blocked layout. Whenever I'm scrapbooking my kids' school pictures, I like to keep it simple. Um, I used to do all three of them, but my oldest daughter's in college now, so I don't have to do one for her anymore. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is add some lovely lipstick grow grain ribbon, and I'm gonna put a piece up here, and I'm going to put a piece right down there. And I'm just gonna use plain old transparent tape to tape it to the back. So I'll use some paper snips, and I'm gonna make sure that I cut off enough so that I leave extra for me to wrap around underneath my layout and tape down. And lay this piece out. So I don't have a precise measurement, but since this is a 12 by 12 inch piece of um, cardstock, I would guess you could probably do like 14, 15 inches, and that would give you enough to wrap around to the back. So I'll pick up two pieces of masking tape and I am going to flip this over. Okay. Make sure I got it stuck there where I want it. Flip it over and just tape it to the back. There's no need to use your fancier, more expensive adhesive for this part. No one's going to see it. It's going to stay in place just fine. And if it's not where you want it to be, you can always adjust it. That's easy to do with this kind of tape. Lay this piece down. Now, if you really, really want to hold it in place, you could put a little glue dot underneath there to hold it in place while you flip it over. But remember, part of the charm of scrapbooking is that it's not perfect, that it's got your stamp of creativity on it, your unique touch. I know a lot of people don't like to journal on their scrapbook pages because they don't like their handwriting, but I can tell you my grandmother does not have <laughs> the neatest handwriting, but she's still alive. But when she's gone, I will very much enjoy her handwriting and the fact that she wrote in all the cards that she sent me. I am not going to be concerned that her handwriting was not particularly neat. So go ahead and, and journal on your scrapbook pages. This particular page I don't need to journal on other than to do a simple, a couple simple things um, just because it's just, it's their school pictures. So for the photo mat, I'm using a piece of pool party cardstock and a piece of lovely lipstick cardstock. This piece, which measures a five by seven photo is gonna go on this. So I cut it to five and a half, and I'm guessing by seven and a half. Yes, five and a half by seven and a half. And it's gonna get glued onto this piece of pool party cardstock. Now I'm going to, I left myself a lot of room because I'm actually going to tear the top and the bottom of it. So when I glue this photo mat down, I want to make sure I don't put it all the way to the top. I need room for my tearing technique. I love to tear cardstock. I like the, I don't know, I just like the look of the uneven texture of it. OK. 
Okay, got that down and then I'm going to grab it and tear it. Now, the edge that you get is actually a function of which direction you are tearing the paper. So in this case, I tore towards me. And so you can see the core of the cardstock is, is showing and that's what I want. That is what I want. But if you don't want that, you want a different look, you can tear the opposite way. So you can have it like this. So see how you can see the inside of the cardstock there? And on this side, you can't. It's a little bit of a neater edge. So it's just a per matter of personal preference. You can do whatever you want. Okay. And that's going to get glued down to the back of this. And I'm actually going to use um, a little bit stronger adhesive. This is Fast Fuse. Stampin' Up! used to carry it, but they don't anymore. But I still have rolls of it left, and I love it because it's super strong. You can also use tear and tape, too, to do this. Okay, and I'm going to lay that down just like that. Okay. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp a few hearts around the edge of this lovely lipstick cardstock. You can do it before you lay the cardstock on there, but you can do it after too. It doesn't really matter. And this heart that I'm using comes from the Heartfelt stamp set, which is in Stampin' Up's 2020 mini catalog. And I'm just gonna make a random pattern around the edge of this. Some of the hearts I'll stamp right side up, some I'm gonna do upside down. Doesn't matter because the photo's gonna take center stage anyways. This is just a nice little extra touch to it. I've been scrapbooking, I wanna say maybe 20 years now. It started with an album for my mom all about her life from when she was a little girl up until when my brother she was raising my brother and I and then I started with a baby book because I had my daughter oldest daughter shortly afterwards and I've just been scrapbooking ever since so I have hearts from this set right here heartfelt and I'm using this heart right here so don't forget you can use your stamp sets to decorate and spruce up your scrapbook pages too. Now I used a couple die sets to create some embellishment pieces. So these pieces are from the Stitch So Sweetly dies that are also in the Stampin' Up! 2020 mini catalog and these are from the Paint and Labels dies which are in the exact same catalog. These I'm going to use in a minute. These get writing on them. So this is where my handwriting will come into play. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the school year on this one right here. And this one is, um, this is Grapefruit Grove cardstock. I'm looking for, there, there it is. Okay, and the school year that I'm doing is 2018. So I'm just going to take that same journaling pen that I used to outline these places, or these squares, and I'm going to write 2018 in here. Okay, and that's going to get glued up here to the side. And actually, I'm going to save that piece for last. And next, I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to put them on either side of this. And I'm going to use my paper piercer to poke a hole in the center. And then I'm gonna string some twine across it with some silver brads here. Find my supplies. I have a really small desk space here. Really, really small. So things have a tendency to get lost really easily. So I'm gonna cut some of this white twine. I'm giving myself a lot of extra room here because I'm gonna actually wrap them around the silver brad that I'm using. Okay, now it would help if you can hold this in place first. So I'm just gonna put the tiniest little bit of snail 
on the back of this and stick it down. And I'll put some on the back of this and stick it down. Okay, and that'll make it easier for me to pierce these holes. And I'm just going right through the centers. There we go, using a paper piercer. And now I'm going to put the silver brad in here. Stampin' Up! has a container of mini metallic brads, and there's more than just silver ones in there. I believe there's copper, gold, rose gold, and silver. So I put this brad in through the hole that I pierced, and I'm only putting it in part way. I'm not pushing it all the way through because I wanna take that white baker's twine and I wanna wrap it around there. So I'm leaving myself a little bit of a tail and I'm going to wrap this a couple times around there. There we go. Let's try this again. Okay. Wrap it around. And then when you push the brad the rest of the way through and flip it over to bend the prongs on the back, that will hold this twine in place. And I'm going to do the same thing with this opposite side, too. Let's put the brad partially part way in there. And then we're going to wrap this. I gave myself a lot of extra twine here. But better to have too much than too little, right? And then I'll flip the paper over and bend the prongs back. Okay. That's in there nice and snug. And then I'm gonna trim it, since I've got so much extra. And if you want, you can actually just kind of pull apart, use your nails to fray the ends of that a little bit, if you like that added interest. Okay, then the next thing I'm going to do is take that Stitch So Sweetly label I was talking about in a Stampin' Up! chalk marker. And this writes in white. I have found these to work better than the white gel pens. The white gel pens have a tendency to clog and to stop working. These do not. If You, you do have to write a little bit slower than you would a regular journaling pen to give the ink time to flow out. But I find that they work a lot better than the gel pens. So they are my white writing tool of preference. Now I'm going to write my daughter's name and her grade from last school year. So I need to make sure that I get the grade right because I don't want to write the current year's grade because that would not be the proper picture. So, okay, I'm going to write her name. And last year she was in 10th grade. Oh, she's getting ready to take the SATs here in another month or so. Crazy because I feel like my other daughter just graduated. So but that's what happens when you have three kids that are close in age. Everything happens at one time, it seems like. And I'm going to put that down here in the bottom right. Give it a little press with the liquid glue. Okay. And I'm going to add some of these Stampin' Up! Heart Epoxy Droplets. They come in three different sizes. You can see there's the large one, the medium size, and the real tiny ones. I'm going to use... The lar I, largest ones probably aren't going to fit in the bottom there, so I'm going to go for the medium ones, and I'm just going to add one there. And let's see what the large one looks up there. Hmm, that might be a little bit too big, so I think I'll go with another medium-sized one up there. Um, eh, maybe down there. And then I will put, I will, I'll put a large one right there. I like that. Okay, there we go. They're clear. They yeah, had just a nice little bit of shine. This is where the photo's going to go. Now my daughter, I don't she doesn't want me to show her photo, but you just tuck it right underneath that string there. And you can see how the heart's there. They just nicely frame the photo, but they're not the star of the scrapbook page. So there's no need to worry about getting them perfect or in the right spot. But that is a simple color block layout that you can make 
for any size photo really, but in particular, it's nice if you wanna highlight just one special photo. And it uses minimal supplies, and it doesn't take very long at all to make. So I hope you'll give it a try, and if you need to place an order for any of these Stampin' Up! supplies, I would be so happy to be your demonstrator. My um, name is Nicole Steele. I am the owner of The Joyful Stamper, and my shopping site is shopwithnicole.stampinup.net, or you can go to my blog at thejoyfulstamper.com. Thank you, and have a blessed day, friends.